Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. The coordinate geometry question on the Leave Insert Ordinary Level paper for 2016 was question 9. So again, one of the longer questions towards the end of the paper. So I'm expecting it to be quite long and probably a mix of chapters. That tends to be normal for the, uh, the questions towards the end. Joe wants to draw a diagram of his farm. He uses axes and coordinates to plot his farmhouse at the point F on the diagram below. Uh, he uses to plot a farmhouse, so F for farmhouse. Okay, write down the coordinates of the point F. Okay, always when you're writing down coordinates, X before Y in the alphabet, X before Y when you're plotting. So this is at the number 4 and up to 1. So the coordinates there are 4, 1. Okay, a barn is five units directly north of the farmhouse. And you can see they've given us a little compass here to show us north. So the barn is five units directly north. Plot the point representing the position of the barn on the diagram. Label the point B. So five units up. Okay, so I'm looking at the y-axis and I can see every two boxes represents a number. So five units up. So one, two three, four, five. So you can see what I've done. I've literally just gone like five frog jumps up to find me that position up there at six. Okay, and if I've gone five up, the other thing I should note if every number is two boxes is that I should be gone up 10 boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, that looks good. And don't forget to label it B. Okay, Joe's quad bike is marked with the point Q on the diagram. So this is Joe's quad bike. Find the distance from the barn B, from the barn B uh, to the quad Q. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. Okay, well, that's the first thing I need to do is write down the coordinates of the point B. So it is 4 comma 6 and I'm finding the distance from the barn B to the quad Q. So Q is minus 2 up to 7 and we have to find the distance. So if we go back to the log tables you can see that the distance is given here. It's also called the length. So it's the square root of x2 minus x1 to be squared plus y2 minus y1 to be squared. Watch out for maths language for the length of because sometimes they ask the question like that instead of using words. Okay, so the distance from the barn. So the di distance between b and q is the square root of, so I'm, all I'm doing is copying down this formula here x2 minus x1 ought to be squared plus y2 minus y1 ought to be squared. Okay, the first thing you've got to do is to label your two points that you're finding the distance between. If you forget, know that it's here in the log tables. The first point is x and y of the first point, so they call it x1, y1. This is x and y of the second point, and they call it x2, y2. So x1, y1, x2, y2. And you sub them in here where it calls for them. So it's the square root of x2, which is here, minus x1 to be squared plus y2 minus y1 to be squared. Put that into your calculator, just like I'm doing now. So bracket minus 2 minus 4 all to be squared plus bracket 7 minus 6 close your bracket squared so I am getting for that root 37 not too overly concerned because the question asked for it to be in two decimal places 
okay that root 37 I've put down here is leaving it as a third so just hit STD on that and you get 6.08 okay so that's the distance from um, the barn to Q okay Joe's tractor is at the point T where F B, Q, T is a parallelogram. Plot T on the diagram and write the coordinates of T below. Okay, so a parallelogram. Okay, so I'm going to try and draw this on the screen. Um, do I have a ruler? I do. Okay, and then F to B, okay, and then I have to see this one is sorry, I have to do my eye because it is the easiest way to do it, okay, to form a parallelogram. So my drawing's not perfect, apologies for that, it's hard to draw it on the screen. But Joe's tractor is at the point T where FPQT is a parallelogram. And you can see you have to label every point. So just to give you a feel for marks, if you had written in the point B up here, um, perfectly fine as um, if you'd drawn the dot, you got one out of five marks. So they penalize you for not labeling your points. Okay, so the coordinates of T then are minus 2 on the x-axis plus 2 on the y. So minus 2, 2 is what I'm getting for T. So minus 2, comma 2. Joe wants to plough the land enclosed by the parallelogram F, B, Q, T. Find the area of the parallelogram in square room units. Okay. So area of a parallelogram. If you wish, uh, I think it's in the log tables. Yeah. Okay. So area of a parallelogram. Okay. Page eight is a h. Okay. Now, what does that mean? We'll come to the diagram. So I can see it's the length of a side. Okay. And it's the perpendicular. Um, distance up okay so a bit different to a rectangle that way where a rectangle would just be a by b length by breadth this is a by the perpendicular distance h up okay so how do we do r1 okay well i'm looking to see could i get a perpendicular distance up like h okay it's not as easy to do, would you agree, because that's not a straight line. So my perpendicular, because it has to be 90 degrees, would be something like that. Okay, um, that's one way of doing it. However, it is going to be five, but I, I want to show you another way of doing it, just in case you're querying whether your perpendicular distance is is five or not. Okay, so in any shape you can just change color. And any four sided shape, if that was straight, can't I form two triangles? Okay, and then can't I get the area by just multiplying that area by by two? So perhaps this is the easiest way to get the area for them. And it's good practice anyway, because the area of a triangle comes up a lot in this chapter. So you'll see on your coordinate geometry page that there's a formula for the area of a triangle, okay? Half of x1, y2 minus x2, y1, okay? And that's the area of a triangle. Okay, when you look at that formula though, it has only two points in it, x1, y1, x2, y2. 
Okay, so what we have to do is we have to move that triangle so that one of the points is on zero, zero, and then move the other two by the same amount. So in other words, it looks it looks like T is an easy one to move, okay? So I'm going to move T onto the origin, but I have to move Q by the same amount and in the same direction so that my triangle ends up being somewhere here. Okay, so rather than pinned where it is, I move it down, so I'm not changing its area, I'm literally just sliding it down so that one of the corners is on zero, zero, and then I get the area of the other corners. So let's move T. We said T was, what did we say T was? Minus two, two. Oh, I should be doing it here, sorry. Just move it for you. So area is equal to a half of x1, y2 minus x2, y1. Okay, so let's take t minus 2, 2 and move them to 0, 0. So what do I have to do for that? Well, to the x coordinate, I have to add on 2. So how do I bring minus 2 to 0? I add on 2. And to the y coordinate on this side, I have to subtract 2. Now, does that make sense when I look at my, my diagram? Well, I am adding 2 onto x. That looks good. Sorry, I've had plus 4. Okay, so that does look good. And then I have to subtract 2 off it to get down to 0. So down 2 and back 2 is what I'm doing. So this does look good. Okay, and then you have to do it to the other two points as well. So we have to move Q and we have to move F by the same amount. Okay, so Q is the quad and it was minus 2, 7. And F was the farmer house, and it's the one we started with. It's 4, 1. Okay, so just like the other ones, we're going to add 2 to the X coordinates and subtract 2 off the Y, so that we end up getting minus 2 plus 2 is 0, 7 minus 2 is 5, and in this one, we end up getting 4 plus 2 is 6, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Okay, now these two new points, after we move it, are what becomes my x1, y1, x2, y2 that I put into this area formula. Okay, so a half of, so x1 by y2, and when the letters are written together like that, you just uh, multiply the numbers together minus x2, y1. So I'm getting a half of, well, that, that one's going to be 30. Oh, sorry, that one's going to be 0, because 0 by anything is 0. Um, so I get a half of minus 30. OK, so the minus might look a bit strange. Um, where it comes from is because of the location of the triangle. So we've moved this triangle down here onto the negative values here of the y-axis. So the area is just coming out as negative, okay? But area is just surface area, it's what it takes, it's the space it takes up. So the minus doesn't really make sense when we think about the area of it. It's just, uh, it's just I suppose, it shows me location. So for this one, I would go half of 30, I ignored the sign, and I'm getting 15 square units. Okay, now of course remember that's just for half the parallelogram because it was the triangle, so therefore area of the parallelogram FBQT is equal to 2 by 15 equal to 30 square units. Okay, so that might be the easiest way to get the area of the parallelogram. Okay, so that's part E done. So part E then, given that the angle QFB, okay, 
Let me clean up this now a small bit. Let me draw back in my lines. Okay, so what angle was that? B, Q, F. So B, Q, F. Okay, so I'm going to put back in that diagonal line again. Okay, so B, Q, F. So it's this little angle up here is B, Q, F. And they're telling me that's 45 degrees. Um, given that's 45, use trigonometric methods to find the angle B. Have I just written down the wrong angle? The angle QFB. Okay, not to worry. QFB down here okay the angle QFB is 45 degrees and the question wants me to find the angle BQF so BQF up here so this is the one that I need to figure out Okay, so how do we do this? Is this easy? Is this hard? Okay, well, we'd have to go and we'd have to see what other information do I have about this triangle? Okay, what have I found out? So, one of the things we know is that the length of BQ is 6.08, okay? So the length of this is 6.08. We know that the length of BF is 5 because it told us down here that the barn was 5 units directly above. Okay, and I knew I, knew I had to have more information about that triangle because there's no way they can give you just one angle and expect you to be able to find more information on another angle. There has to be more information in it. Okay, so right, we have to find this angle here. So let's think about what we know about triangles. Well, we know angles in a triangle add up to 180, but I don't know this one, so therefore I can't use that to get this one. I'm thinking sine, cos and tan, could I use that? Well, no, because we don't know, I suppose. Oh. Yes, we don't have a 90 degree angle. That's not 90 because this line is at a slant and these are obviously not 90. So it's a non-right angled triangle. So let's go back to trig. Okay, down the bottom here is right angled trig, which is the sine, cos and tan. I was talking about in Pythagoras' theorem. It's not right angled, so I can use none of them. So I come up here to non-right angle triangles. And you'll see there's area that's no good. So I have the sine rule or the cosine rule to solve this. Either of these will give you the answer. It just comes down to which one do I have enough information about to be able to answer it. So you can see in your log tables that they call the sides little letters, so little ABC, and they call the angles big letters ABC. Okay, why am I telling you this? Well, when you look at the cosine rule, then you see little a, little b, little c, little b, little c. So an awful lot of sides and just one angle b. Okay, so if I'm to find an angle using the cosine rule, I need to know the other three sides. And then if I look at the sine rule, it's a mixture of sides and equal split between sides and angles. Okay. So let's go back to see what we have. Well, we have two sides, that's good. And we have an angle and we have to find an angle. So the cosine rule isn't going to work because I would need to know this side and to have these three, little a, little b, little c, to find this angle. Okay, so it looks like the sine rule is going to work. And how the sine rule works is um, 
is it relates sides to their angles across from them. Okay, so little a is opposite angle a, little b is opposite angle b, little c is opposite angle c. So it relates angles with the sides across from them. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that 45 degrees is related to 6.08 and it means this angle I don't know is connected to the 5. Okay, so they are the pairs that go together and I always draw in these lines to show me the angle that's across from the side. So the sine rule then, okay, I'm just going to write it down as it is in the log tables, A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, okay? And of course, it's equal to C over sine C, but we normally only use uh, two bits of it at a time. If I need an angle like I do in this one, you can flip the sine rule so that you get sine A over A being equal to sine B over B, okay? It's always much easier when what we need is on the top rather than on the bottom. Okay, and then you fill in what you have from the page before. So I have 6.08 and 45 degrees. Okay, so sine 45 degrees over 6.08. So what did I do there? I just related the side to the angle across from it. And so that's equal to the sine of the angle we want. I'm going to call it x over 5. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Um, how do we solve it then? Well, we cross multiply. You can always cross multiply when that equals to sign sits in the middle. And cross multiplying just means this one by this one. So I get 5 sine 45 degrees is equal to this one by this one. Okay, and it doesn't really matter what order I write them down in. Okay, and now you can see it's removed the fractions. That's why I like cross multiplying. I have no fractions now. I need to solve for x. So I need to strip away all of this stuff so that I get just x on its own. So the first thing I'm going to get rid of is the 6.08. Okay, it's attached to sign here by multiply. So if I divide, it will cancel it. Okay, that's where I'm going. But what I do to one side, I must also do to the other. Okay. The rules of maths. So I'm going to put into my calculator now, hit the fraction button, 5 sine 45 degrees over 6.08. And I'm getting 0.5815 being equal to the sine of x. Okay, now I still want x the angle, not sine x, so I have to get rid of this sine. The opposite of sine is sine inverse. So if I get the sine inverse of both sides, again, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Sine and sine inverse will cancel, so that I end up getting x being equal to, I'm just swapping sides because I prefer the letter on the left, but it, it doesn't matter. So sine inverse of answer equals so I'm getting x to be equal to, and I'm coming up here to see how many decimal places, one decimal place, I'm getting 35.556 degrees on my calculator. So 35, if I'm to round to one decimal place, I need to look at the second one. So 55, so it's closer to six. So 35.6 degrees is what you get for E. So a very, very important skill is the sine rule and the cosine rule. That was actually worth 20 marks, just that part there. If you compare it with this part, it was worth 5. C was also worth 5. And B was worth 5. And A part 1 and 2 were worth 5 each. So quite a chunk of marks here for the sign rule. So make sure you can do it. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our Level 7 in Electronic and Computer Engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keep us healthy, 
the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level 8 in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.